as I take our viewers to the other development from down south. This is about the water war. The water war between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka reached the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of India said that a special bench will be constituted today itself in connection with the matter. Now, the court also said that the panel will decide the date of hearing and it will be announced soon. Reacting to this, meanwhile, Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shiv Kumar reiterated that Karnataka could not release water as per the demand due to rain shortage in the state. But respecting the law, the state has released the best amount that it could. Now, on the other hand, hitting out at the opposition, he said that everyone knows what the JDS and the BJP did when they were ruling the state. Shiv Kumar cleared that safeguarding the people and the farmers is the government's top responsibility. Karnataka, remember, knocked the top court's door in an appeal over the release of the Kaveri water to the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu after the Kaveri Water Management Authority ordered the state to transfer 10,000 cusecs of water daily to Tamil Nadu for 15 days. It is unfortunate that uh, the Tamil Nadu government has gone to the Supreme Court. They know the condition of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and the water inflow. But still we have respected the sentiments of the farmers of both the states and release whatever best we can. In the, they know the business formula also. Though we had a lot of criticism to respect the law of this country, we have released sufficient of water, but we are not able to release whatever the demand was. We had a direction to release 10,000 cusic a day. That was not fully implemented. Today, the Honorable Supreme Court has formed, said that today itself they are going to form a new three-bench committee in this issue. Kaveri, the Supreme Court has formed a, a bench for this. Yeah. So I urge the state government uh, should strongly take up the case of the people of uh, Kaveri uh, Kaveri Belt, including drinking water, Bangalore is an issue. There is shortage of water storage, rainfalls have gone. And uh, already the Kurve crop is taken care by Tamil Nadu. They should put all the facts before the Supreme Court and uh, protect the interest of the farmers of Karnataka. And we are with the state government as far as uh, protection of uh, farmers uh, in Kaveri region. And uh, as far as uh, state government should act now, they have failed in CWMA. They should not repeat in Supreme Court. Yes, in fact, as you rightly said, the, the raging uh, Kaveri river water dispute between Karnataka and uh, uh, Tamil Nadu has reached Supreme Court with both sides moving the Supreme Court. Uh, Tamil Nadu filing an application saying that Karnataka is not releasing its due share of water. Uh, at the same time, Karnataka also filing a response uh, explaining its stand on the issue and uh, raising several constraints as far as this is concerned. Uh, Karnat remember, uh, two days back, uh, the uh, Tamil Nadu uh, had in Tamil Nadu representatives had in fact even walked out of the uh, Kaveri Water Management Board uh, meeting uh, saying that uh, protesting the non-release of water by Karnataka and uh, uh, Karnataka says and also Tamil Nadu told the Supreme Court that the farmers in the Kaveri Delta area is suffering because of lack of water and water scarcity because Karnataka is not uh, releasing its due share. So but today uh, the Chief Justice uh, agreed that it's a very serious issue and has agreed to uh, set up a special bench uh, today itself and will also assure that the early listing will be given uh, to this matter. All right, let's understand this, this issue better. I'm joined uh, by my guests this evening who will share their perspective on this Kaveri water row, which has been going on for decades now. Prashant G.S., spokesperson for the BJP, continues to be with us. Uh, Jagdish Vanan, political analyst, also joins us. And Dr. Leela Fernandez, political scientist and author of Governing Water in India, also joins us from Michigan. Thank you very much uh, for talking with Mirror now and joining us right now. Before I get into the politics of it, into the tussle of it, I want to go right across to Dr. Leela Fernandez to understand from her 
uh, how this tussle really affects and how this water sharing really affects the farmers of the region. Dr. Leela Fernandez, you know, we know that in India, this region, of course, has been hugely impacted. Uh, by the shortage of rainfall this year. We know that this has been a distress year, 63% less rainfall than the average. The catchment areas of the region have had about, uh, you know, 30% uh, less water that has been accumulated this year. Help us understand what this means for the Kaveri Basin and the farmers, the ones who work there, the ones who own agricultural land, they are impacted by this. Because the river has been overused um, for a long time. And as you know, the issue goes back several decades, uh, actually uh, starting even from the colonial period. The far farmers from both sides, uh, both states are seriously affected. Um, you know, the distress is real because the farmers' livelihoods are at stake. Um, what 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 the, the situation is that nobody's going to be happy with any resolution because both sides will have to find some kind of compromise. And it's critical for the institutions, whether it's the CWMA or the Supreme Court, to come to some kind of um, uh, objective um, uh, analysis, um, which takes into account the distress years. I think one of the issues with the CWMA is that the calculations may not have uh, fully taken into account what happens when there's a sh severe sh shortage of rainfall. And so that may have to be factored in. Um, and so the serious, the issue is real. And I think what, what is extremely important is for the temperature to be lowered because both sides suffer and farmers from both sides um, have um, um, real concerns in terms of livelihood. All right, uh, with that in our, right at the start of our discussion, let me take this across now to Jagdish Paran. Jagdish Paran, uh, you know, we know that both sides have had this long tussle, but uh, what's the problem if some more amount of water is released into Tamil Nadu and both sides benefit out of it? Yeah, see, uh, right, right from the start, as I said, uh, this has been happening over decades and uh, it started even from the colonial era. When the interim judgment came in 1991, we were awarded this 205 TMC, but we were aware of our uh, again was more. And when the final judgment came, it was further reduced to one nitro TMC, we lost water. And when the final judgment came in 2018, it again became one thousand ton TMC. So over the period of years, when this Kaveri dispute is going on, we have been, uh, just because there's a lower white right state, uh, the water that is released to Tamil Nadu by Karnataka is getting reduced every year. And on the other hand, the cultural cultivable land, the number of hectares, that has also been reducing in Tamil Nadu, whereas it keeps on increasing in Karnataka. That's a major issue. This, this was pointed out repeatedly in Supreme Court and even in the power uh, Kaveri water. We, we have been told now to increase the cultivable land in Karnataka, but Karnataka doesn't listen to it and they, they, they keep on going. I understand there's a monsoon failure uh, this year, but again, see, in from June and July, in June, Karnataka was supposed to release 10 TMC, and in July, Karnataka was supposed to, uh, supposed to release 34 TMC, which they again put into 44 TMC from June 1 to July 31. But as of today, Karnataka will release only 16 TMC. We are short of 28.849 TMC. See, when you say the monsoon is failed in the water catchment areas in Karnataka, this is 30%. And if the same uh, pro rata basis is taken, we should have got at least 30 TMC. But we haven't got even 30 TMC, we got only 12, uh, 16 TMC. So that's why our government has released 24,000 cubes of water from August Cloud down to see, which in Kaveri Water Management Authority, they said not 24,000 cubes, we'll do it 15,000 cubes. And on August 11, this again reduced to 10,000 cubes. I don't what I, I don't understand what is happening even in Kaveri Water Management Authority board because Supreme Court very clearly said this will be your final our final authority. We will not come into picture for next 15 years. Please don't come into court for 15 years. Let's follow what is decided in the judgment. If it is 10 TMC in June. Karnataka should release it. If it is 24 TM, 34 TMC in July, Karnataka should release it. But even in Kaveri Water Management Authority, if you are not getting uh, any solution, there is no other go other than going to Supreme Court again and offering the door. We, we find it hard because this Kurve crop that is already cultivated is going to fail. And in some time, we, we have to start Samba crop. And we cannot even start. See, uh, farmers, they are getting affected badly. See, Canada is saying we don't want, we don't have water for drinking, we need potable water, 
and that's what they said even in the uh, last judgment in 2018 they said we will need more water for uh, bangalore and the uh, two quarter and again they are saying we need more water i see the uh, reservoir status today and i find water in the beach care of our kavini i i didn't say that's a monsoon failure but there is still water available in care of kavini harvi hemavati okay. to release at least 10000 cubes but even that is not happening when dk shivkumar said we are releasing we have been asked to release 10000 cubes which was again uh, i mean not the right one and that is not even we are not even getting that type of cubes you know what happens in, when it comes to biligandalu biligandalu when say for example canada is using 10 tmc but it this is billing under it because it's tmc we lose close to 4 tmc of water i don't know what's happening somebody i, I don't know somebody stealing or some uh, karnataka people they are stealing water from uh, getting from care of the community to get the makeup done that is there is an another issue so regularly i mean continuously farmers in tamil nadu getting affected when there is no okay. monsoon period there is not an issue when there is a monsoon period there is an issue and that's why this cavalry management tribunal i mean cavalry management authority board is formed and that's why uh, getting it from I mean, taking it out of all the monsoon failures as well as monsoon not being paid the uh, supreme court gave this judgment still i i that's what i'm saying there is still water in all, all the right. reservoirs in karnataka and if they say we cannot release water it is against the farmers of tamil nadu they should release water they should follow what is said in the final judgment they should follow what is being said in the cavalry water management authority board all right all right let me take this across to prashant gs uh, prashant gs uh, you know the bjp has been saying that the farmers are hugely affected uh, and that uh, you know the congress government in the state should not be doing this in the interest of the farmers on ground uh, you know wh- why is it uh, such a huge problem we know that it is there is there has been a shortage of rainfall this year but otherwise too uh you know i'm sure karnataka has in its arrangements and has organized in its uh setup uh some sort of uh you know extra arrangement for the farmers there in the region yeah firstly i would like to bring out on record that mr jagdeshwaran cannot accuse our farmers of stealing water kaveri belongs to karnataka as well so he cannot make that statement and i would but request this medium that he has withdraw that statement he cannot say that people farmers are stealing water if he doesn't know the facts if he doesn't know the facts the facts remain unknown okay jagdeesh will come to you 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 Mr Jagdeeshwaran wait for a turn Ka- Kaveri water disputes tribunal was clear in its judgment when they said Tamil Nadu is required to grow kuruvai crop in 1.8 lakh acres and it should use 32 tmc of water whereas as on august 7 Tamil Nadu has used 60.97 tmc of water for kuruvai crop which is about more than four times so therefore and moreover when there is no water in karnataka and karnataka is facing severe drought it is the congress government of karnataka which is playing politics here it is cozying up to its ally that i dot i n dot d dot i dot a ally partner dmk and in trying to fail the farmers of karnataka and now in fact congress in karnataka is speaking the language of the tamil nadu government there which is very unfortunate state which is why our farmers in mandya and mysore today held protest and they are also wanting to protest further till their problems are resolved it is not that karnataka is having enough water to release to tamil nadu when the water is not available for drinking purposes in karnataka tamil nadu expecting it that we should release all the water to tamil nadu for the farmers is not right at all you have to look at farmers on both sides and therefore some one set of the state or one state cannot suffer not having water to drink at all whereas you are talking about having adequate water and to follow the tribunal order anyway tamil nadu has approached the supreme court we will wait with bated breath for the supreme court decision and whatever the supreme court decides will be the law of the land and we will follow it but i would like to reiterate that congress government in karnataka is failing the farmers of karnataka because they are not protecting our interests at all and they are towing the language of speaking the language of dmk in tamil nadu or any other party there and again i repeat we are not stealing our own water and my dear friend jagdeeshwaran has to take back a statement on that
Okay, Jagdishwana, now make your point. You wanted to respond. Yes, number one, Kaveri doesn't belong to any state. Please make the judgment. You know it better. Kaveri doesn't belong to any state. Supreme Court has clearly said just because somebody is a lower right parent state, you cannot keep on repeating that since on upper right parent state, you cannot say it belongs to us. No, it, it is not. It is not. Just be very clear on that. And when you are saying, you are, you are again repeating, you are not feeling your bottom. No. Just, just tell me what is happening. From the point it was released from these KRS or Kabini or Hemavadi or Harangi till the point it reached Baligandalu, some what, what, how, what happens to the water? Now you tell me. You, since you know it better, you know there is a there is what what is going somewhere, right? What where is, where is the water going? So something is happening. I'm not I'm not sure the, the farmers or the government, somebody is happening. And again, if they uh, Congress government from Karnataka is doing a favor to be a DMK or no, they are not doing any favor. BJP is what and Congress is, is not just that just that what I would say. Because BJP is saying they don't even release water. How can they say? How can you say there is you can't even release water? And you are again saying we will follow the uh, judgment will follow Supreme Court. You are not following Supreme Court. Be it, be it Congress or be it um, uh, BJP, they are not following Supreme Court. They all they do not follow Supreme Court order, especially when there is a monsoon failure. That is the biggest problem. So following Supreme Court order will not even approach the Supreme Court, not even go to the Supreme Court. We are going to Supreme Court just because okay. we are following any of the order of Supreme Court or any of the order of the Kaveri. Uh, what is going to Tamil Nadu went to Supreme Court, Court first. No issue. We understand there is a monster failure. What the for a pro rata, on the pro rata says, if I have a 30% monster failure, on a pro rata basis, you can say 30% of the reduction. But you are not even giving enough water. I mean, you are you are reducing around 70% of the water. We need to have water to give it to you, Mr. Jagdeshwaran. We need to have water to give it to you. It's unfortunate that our state government is failing our own farmers. We need to have water to give it to you. Okay, it okay. It's not that we are flush with water and not giving it to you. Okay, gentlemen, both of you have made your points, Jagdishwaran and Prashant GS. I need to wrap this up, but quickly before wrapping it up, I want to go across to Dr. Fernandez. Dr. Leela, uh, you know, before I wrap this discussion up, uh, help us understand we're living in a time where climate change impact is severe. We are seeing uh, the ripple effects of it across the world. How will our catchment areas behave in such situation? And is there a way where we can, uh, you know, govern our way through this kind of a water tussle in the times of climate change? Yes, that is a critical question because there will be continual... Um probably intensified cycles of floods and droughts, which makes governance of water very difficult. Um, and what really needs to happen for the short term, you know, the Supreme Court will make a decision and, you know, most likely all the parties will not be happy, but there has to be a compromise. But long term, there really has to be more planning in terms of how water is being utilized, both um, by agriculture, but also in terms of industrial investment, you know, in terms of water intensive um, industries in the southern, uh, the whole southern region of the country. Um, because this is not something which is going to to go away. And what would be really critical is to to make that kind of planning, to think about regional cooperation when you are not in a distress year. Because when you're in a distress year, you know, people's livelihoods are at stake. And, and so the political um, stakes are really high. So so once this crisis has passed, rather than waiting for the next crisis, it's very critical yeah. for the state governments to work with each other and with the central government to think about development, um, to think about you know, cropping patterns, to think about uh, industrial investment um, and drinking water needs as populations in urban centers rise um, uh, because climate change will continue to put this pressure on both governments. And to some extent, it doesn't matter which parties are in charge yeah. because whoever is in the government will face these kinds of pressures. Absolutely. Absolutely. A very important point there. It doesn't matter who's at the uh, reins of the government. Uh, it really will affect everybody. At this point, I'm going to wrap this discussion up. Dr. Leela Fernandez, Jagdishwaran and Prashant GS, thank you very much for speaking with Mira now this evening and sharing your perspective on the contentious Kaveri water row. Thank you very much. Uh, and now we're heading into a short break. News and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned to Mira now.